Morning everyone, so pleased that you can connect with Glasgow Elam this Sunday. Great to have you with us. Today things are a little bit different. Elam nationally decided that all its pastors needed a holiday and so they produced a, a Sunday set for us all and uh, we're going to connect with what's happening in churches throughout the nation today. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. We've got Elam Sound leading us in worship and Mark Greenwood bringing us the word and I have no doubt that you're going to be encouraged, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be challenged. So sit back, relax, enjoy, expect to hear from God. Hi everyone and welcome to our service of worship today as part of Elim Summertime. We're going to be joining together uh, from our homes, from wherever we're gathered, uh, as one family, as one family of churches, not just across the UK, but all around the world. And you know, from sunrise today to sunset, the Church of Jesus Christ, not just Elim, but in all shapes and sizes and styles and varieties, is gathering in his name, not necessarily in large crowds like many of us would normally be used to, but in every situation coming together as one, one people, one faith, one Lord, one message of hope for all the world. And we're gonna pray as we start our worship service together. Jesus has a great invitation when he puts out in Matthew 11, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, who are worn down, weary. And what a great prayer for summertime. What a great prayer in the light of all the seasons that we've recently been navigating uh, with an emergency health uh, crisis. And, and it's a personal invitation right now as we pray. So let's pray. Come Lord Jesus, in response to your invitation, we want to unburden today. We want to pour our burdens and our weights upon you and to receive in their place that rest, that promise of your abiding presence and peace as we go not just into today, but into another week, into another part of the journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to worship together now as Elim Sound lead us.
Well, a huge thanks to Elim Sound for leading us in a sung expression of gratitude to what God has done in our lives. If you're watching here today and not normally attending a church service, singing is something that we do just to express our gratitude. When I'm watching the Six Nations and my team's winning, I'm always singing. So it's a natural thing that we do. So a huge thank you to Elim Sound for doing that. My name's Mark Greenwood and in a few moments I'm going to become and chatting to you about what we need to live life in what is a changing world. But just before I do that, we're going to listen to an incredible story from a young man called Kieran uh, Bassey who has done something he never expected to do and he's going to be interviewed by a very good friend of mine Andy Hancock so welcome Andy and Kieran. Um, so I'm here with Kieran Bassey. Kieran it is great to have you with us and we're just going to chat a little bit about your lockdown story about how you've come to faith during lockdown um, and we're going to hear all of that all about that a little bit later on but Kieran just tell us a little bit about your background and your kind of life pre making a decision to follow Jesus? Uh, so I'm originally from Leicester. I've spent a long time traveling around for work and various other reasons as well. Uh, but as in terms of religious background, I've always been raised to be not very religious due to the fact that my mom's Sikh, my dad's Muslim, but a very diverse cultural background. Um, so it's always been very difficult for me to kind of pick a religion to follow, looking for God and for Jesus was something that I didn't plan to do and it, it just happened. So how did it happen then? Because obviously like March 2020, lockdown hits, coronavirus pandemic hits the UK and we're, we're in lockdown. So for me, uh, myself, what ended up happening was I lived in Manchester before here and Liverpool before that and I spent a long time kind of thinking about trying to reach out to God, but never really taking the step to do so. But I met my partner in Manchester and she's a practicing Christian. She used to tell me all the time, she'd go, oh, you should, you know, when I was having a tough time or finding it hard to get through certain things, she'd go, oh, you should pray or you should, you know, look, look to God. And I would always be like, nah, it's not going to work for me. But we decided when we get married, we wanted to get married in a church. And I spoke to a friend of mine at work called Hannah, um, who's a, a Life Central uh, regular. And she was the one who kind of told me how Jesus has affected her. And not only that, I saw her go through a few different things her pers like in her personal and work life. But when I was like, how are you able to keep yourself just so composed and so fulfilled mm -hmm. during these times? And she would tell me about how she would pray to Jesus and to God and how that feeling that she would get back from it just gave her more strength to be able to carry on the way she did. And she's such a positive person. So I started to watch the because she shared a few of your uh, a few of the sermons from from church on on sunday mornings so started watching it from that and yeah it just found it really appealing listening to leon talking and yourselves when you guys were doing your your your, your chats before and after I, I found that really kind of invigorating and there was a lot of information there that kind of helped me a little bit and i also felt like every single time i listened to leon talk the things he talked about seemed to be like he was talking to me directly. Wow. Which was really powerful for myself at that particular time. Um, and so I started to pray. I just took it one step at a time. I got myself a Bible over a bit of time and started to read my Bible. It got profound within myself. And now, uh, since then, I had uh, a dream when I woke up. And this dream was the day when I knew that I wanted to be a Christian, that I, my love for Jesus would be never ending. That, Jesus was there to guide me. You've done Alpha, is that right? That's right. So um, Alpha was something I did when I saw it on um, on the the Sunday sermon. 
and I found it really, really kind of interesting because I thought it would be a good way for me to kind of learn a little bit about about the faith. And it was during the Alpha course that I was doing that. I think it was my third or my fourth week when I had that dream. Um, nice. And that was when I, I knew straight away, the first thing I did was I spoke to Simon and I was like, Simon, I need to talk to you and I need to tell you about this dream because I just kind of feel like you can give me the answers that I need from it. And yeah, that was such a helpful conversation. It really, really helped me kind of move forward. And it's, it's, what's it been like for you, Kieran, like coming to faith during a, a worldwide pandemic? And it, like, cause you've never stepped foot in our church, have you? No, I haven't, no. Um, it's been tough for me because I was originally supposed to start a new job on the 25th of March, which is also when we went into lockdown. And because I didn't get to start that job, I've not got any furlough pay. I've been on benefits, right. just managing to get through. And I'm a quite highly ranked manager as well. I used, I'm used to a, a very nice pay. And that pay I'm getting at the moment is nowhere near it. And so financially, it was very, really, really a, a struggle to begin with. Um, and I was, I was finding it very hard. I was getting very depressed and anxious, which is not like me. I'm a very positive person. I always try to mm. find positive in everything. But finding Jesus and having God come to me and speak to me the way that he has, it's been very profound for me having these dreams because I feel like that's how I communicate with, 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 with our Lord. Like, I pray, but I don't always feel like the answers I'm given during the prayer, I feel like that they come back to me at a later time when I'm neat when when it's needed when it's mm. necessary, you know. Mate, it's an amazing story and really inspirational. And um, yeah, thank you, mate. Yeah, no problem. Hi, my name's Mark Greenwood, and I am the national evangelist for Ealing Pentecostal Churches. The word evangelist means somebody who brings good news. So imagine that for a job. I get to bring good news and i'm sure you'll agree that right now we need some good news a number of years ago i was chatting to an older gentleman i guess he would probably be around 80 85 years old and uh, we were just chit-chatting and nattering and as we were chatting he dropped something i think it was a pen out of his hand and just bent down to pick up the pen. He was down for a little bit longer than I would normally expect somebody to be bending down to pick up a pen. And so I said to him, are you, are you all right, sir? Do you, do you need some help? And he said to me, no, it's just that it takes so much effort to get down and to get back up these days that now I'm down here. I just want to think, is there anything else that I need to be doing whilst I'm here to make the effort worth it? I have to say, I was proper chuckling to myself. Sometimes it's good, isn't it? Just to take some time to stop and think, is there anything else I need to be doing now I'm here? The effort needed sometimes to live life. And let's face it, during the past number of months, I mean, March the, uh, 2020 seems such a distant memory now when we've all slowed down and I'm sure like me you've been thinking whilst I'm here is there anything else whilst I'm in this season whilst I'm in this moment is there anything else I need to be doing because undeniably we've slowed down and life has changed hasn't it don't you think it's changed incredibly really and we've been caused a moment to pause. We're calling this season of events Elim Summertime. Summertime's a great moment to pause and to reset, to rest, to recover and to go again. I don't know where you are in your journey of life and faith, whether you would call yourself a committed Jesus follower, a Christian, or whether you would see yourself as somebody maybe who's not that, but you're open minded, somebody who's not yet become a Christian. And just to let you know that in terms of becoming a Christian, kind of the start point is about saying, Do you know what, God, I don't want to live life without you anymore. I want to live life with you. I want to do life your way, not my way. And as I chat to you, this morning, I want to help you understand how you can embrace that for yourself towards the end of my talk. 
I'll let you know how you can do that. But have you ever thought, how on earth do we live life in this ever changing world we find ourselves in? A lot has changed and that is life. I came up against, or I read rather, this uh, little, uh, I don't know what you'd call it really, this paragraph that said this. And, and it was referring to those of you who may be listening, who may not be many to be fair, who were born before 1940. But just, just listen to this list of things that have happened since 1940 that so often we take for granted these days. For those of you born before 1940, you were born before television, penicillin, polio shots, frozen foods, Xerox, plastic, contact lenses, videos, frisbees and the pill. You were born before radar, credit cards, split atoms, laser beams, ballpoint pens, dishwashers, tumble dryers, electric blankets, air conditioners, drip dry clothes, man walking on the moon. You got married first and then you lived together. You thought fast food was what you ate at Lent. Yeah, a Big Mac was an oversized raincoat. Crumpet, you had for tea. You existed before house husbands, computer dating, dual careers, and when a meaningful relationship meant getting along with your cousins. Sheltered accommodation was where you waited for a bus. You were born before daycare centres, group homes and disposable nappies. You'd never heard of FM radio, tape deck, Electric typewriters, artificial hearts, word processors, yoghurt and young men wearing earrings. Time sharing meant togetherness. A chip was a piece of wood or a fried potato. Hardware meant nuts and bolts and software was not a word. Made in Japan meant junk. Making out was a term you used for how you had done in your exams. Stood was something that fastened a collar to a shirt and going all the way meant staying on the bus until you reached your bus depot. Pizza, McDonald's, instant coffee were unheard of. Cigarette smoking was fashionable. Grass was something that was mowed. Coke was kept in the coal house. A joint was a piece of meat that you had on Sundays. A pot was something you cooked it in. El Dorado and ice cream were never heard of. AIDS meant either beauty treatment or help from someone when in trouble. No wonder you are confused and there is a generation gap today. I mean, that's just incredible how the world has changed in those years. And right now we're finding ourselves, the world as a changing landscape, changing high street. And even in this COVID-19, there's potential for shops to go out of business, to suddenly become non-existent. Our world is changing so much. And if we're honest, sometimes it's not always for the better, although there does seem to have been some things that have changed for the better, because some of the things that have changed for the better are some of the things that we've lost sight of. How on earth do we live in this crazy changing world? I want to suggest to you that in a crazy changing world, you need an anchor in something that is dependable 100%, immovable 100% reliable. There's this lovely sentence in the Bible and it's God speaking and he says, I am the Lord that does not change. I am the Lord that does not change. For those of you who are familiar with the Bible, you can see that I've put just a little reference as to how you can find that in the Bible. So the Lord hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. And how we view things hasn't changed. The problem with the world has never changed from God's perspective. I'm originally from Bradford and uh, there's a dual carriageway in Bradford called the A650 Wakefield Road. And as you're coming up the carriageway away from Bradford, there's a roundabout and a church 
on the left hand side. And this church regularly had and I think possibly still does have signs outside that were creative. And some of the signs were more obvious. Some of the signs were not so obvious. You know, things like carpenter from Nazareth requires joiner joiners. I mean, a little bit kind of OK, if you get it. But if you don't, it's kind of a little bit more. Oh. Uh, but one sign uh, that was outside is a reference from the, from the Bible, which I'll give you. And then let me explain. Hold with me. It says, even in recession, the wages of sin is still death. You know, that's a little sentence from the Bible. And it's talking about the fact that when we do things wrong, because we've left God out of our lives, there's a disconnect there's a separation and that problem has never changed. It's been a problem right from the beginning of time and will be right to the end of time. And when you get paid your wages, your employer thinks this is what you deserve for what you've done. Now, you may think you deserve more <laughs> for what you've done. Your employer may think you deserve more less for what you've done but God says there is a wage that perfectly fits what each of us has done and that is death sorry to depress you today and I guess we've been surrounded a lot more by death because of COVID-19 but focus on the really exciting bit yeah you see we do deserve death because of what we've done but here's the beautiful thing that often people don't focus on. God wants to give us a gift. Now, a gift is something that you get that you don't deserve. It's not necessarily reflective of what you have or haven't done. And when God says, actually, what you deserve for what you've done is death. Actually, I want to give you a gift. So the problem has never changed that we've left God out but the truth is the gift that God offers has never changed. God wants to give you new life and forgiveness. And the beautiful thing is, ladies and gentlemen, when you embrace God's gift of new life and forgiveness, the separation from God is removed. We get to connect with him and he can download some amazing stuff into our life and we get to upload some stuff to God as well. He takes away the desire for us to want to do wrong things, to do our own thing. He takes away that separation and deposits his love and purpose. This sense that we are here for a reason and when you speak to any Jesus follower they'll tell you they've got this sense of purpose and God's plan for their life it's absolutely amazing but the problem has never changed a friend of mine a very well-known Christian speaker often says that the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart and I just want to add an extra little word still at the heart of the problem is the problem of the human heart. And that's why God says in the Bible, and I'll put that little sentence I'm going to reference right now on the screen, including where you can find it for those of you who are familiar with the Bible. God says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength and might and love your neighbour as yourself. God wants us to put him first, to love him first and to love our neighbour, those with whom we live in this world as ourselves. Now, I'm sure you will agree we've seen some incredible acts of love and sacrifice through COVID-19. Some incredible demonstrations of people showing that they love each other. And it's like we've kind of got 50 percent of what God says we need to have in place to live a life that is honouring to him. It's like, yeah, we're, we're loving our neighbours. So please keep on. Let's keep on doing that as, as humanity. It's so important, but it's just not quite enough. Do that. But let's love God with everything that we have as well because when we love God with everything that we have that's when the real difference takes place 
See, I arrived at a point in my life many years ago when I was much younger. So did my mum and my dad and my family. My dad classed himself as a lazy atheist. And what he meant by that is he decided there was no God, but he'd not really tried to find out whether it was true or not. My mum had kind of went to a really strict traditional uh, religious school and that kind of put her off anything to do with faith. So we all arrived at a point in our lives where we realised it was I as a young person, them as older people, that we needed to love God. And so that's what we did. And at the end of my talk today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that for yourself. So the problem with the uh, world has never changed. And the second thing I want to say to you, the solution for the problem of the world has never changed. I read this great uh, story many, many years ago of how the Canadian Space Agency wanted to invent a pen that would write in zero gravity. And they spent several millions of Canadian dollars on it and used many, many engineers. And when they finally made it and they announced it, great congratulations flowed in from many, many places all over the world. The Americans, however, told them that they too have come up with a solution for writing in zero gravity. They use a pencil. <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, it's obvious, isn't it, really? It's like, here's the problem. Uh, maybe the Canadian Space Agency had overcomplicated it and the solution was very, very simple. You can actually buy a space pen. Now, I've got one because I'm a gadget man. And the reason you can buy one is because they're made available to the public. They probably need to recoup quite a lot of the money that they've lost. But, oh, my goodness, we overly complicate the problems sometimes. And therefore, we overly complicate the solution. So often in our world, we've all been, it's been about what can we do to sort out the problem in the world? But the truth is, we don't really understand what the problem is. So we can't generate the correct solution. At the moment in our world, there's frantic activity trying to find out a solution to the problem of COVID-19. And it's a little bit like we're kind of clutching and we're hoping. And there's been some amazing progress. Thank you so much to all those who are trying to make this happen. To fully come up with a solution means you need to fully understand the problem. And even then... It doesn't always follow that you can find a solution. But in Jesus, in knowing God, we understand the problem and we can have a solution. Uh, I read very recently, I love this, like the best selling uh, types of books. That's types of books. Uh, cookbooks. I'm sure you've all got copies of them at home. And guess what the next best selling types of books are? Yep dieting books where you learn to cook meals to help you lose weight from the meals that you've just cooked in the cookbooks so many problems that we create and yet there's an incredible solution for that that problem that is in the world that problem of leaving God out the solution is very very simple and it's not a thing it's a person and it's a person called Jesus it's absolutely incredible see somebody once said if our greatest need had have been information God would have sent us an educator if our greatest need had been technology God would have sent us a scientist if our greatest need had been money God would have sent us an economist if our greatest need had been pleasure God would have sent us an entertainer but our greatest need was forgiveness so God sent us a saviour. The solution is Jesus. In the Bible, there's this incredible sentence. I'm going to flash that sentence up on the screen with where you can find it now. It says, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. A great little sentence that summarises why Jesus came. He is, was and always will be God's solution to the problem in the world. The solution to the problem in the world is spiritual because it's a spiritual problem. 
Jesus took the punishment for all the wrong that you and I have done for leaving God out. He took the punishment for all of that so we could be forgiven. When Jesus came to our planet, he walked around showing us what God wants to do in people's lives. He healed people, brought forgiveness, brought purpose, brought value. And what Jesus did 2000 years ago, he is still doing today and wants to do in your life. If you've never said yes to Jesus, receive his forgiveness today because 2000 years ago, He took the punishment, not just for my wrong, but for your wrong. Once and for all, nothing else needs to be done. That totally satisfied what God required. The solution to the problem of the world has never changed. And finally, I want to say to you in my few moments now, the response to the solution to the problem of the world has never changed. It still needs you to respond Otherwise, it just stays out there and won't impact you. I read this great story of how there was a preacher preaching at a church and talking about what Christianity was all about. And a well-known communist entered the building and shouted out, what good is Christianity? Communism can put new clothes on that man. And he pointed to a man. Ah, the preacher, such wisdom, he paused and replied, communism may well be able to put new clothes on that man, but only Christianity can put a new man in those clothes. Isn't that wonderful? I want to say to you, Jesus wants to put a new person into your clothes. He wants to make you brand new. There's this amazing sentence that talks about what it means to be a Jesus follower. And it says, therefore, If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. The old goes, the new comes and you become a brand new person. It's incredible. Why don't you pause? What can you do right now in this moment? I want to suggest you it starts by recognising you've left God out. That it starts by asking God to forgive you of all that you've done and to come and change you and to make you a brand new person. God today is calling you to put your life in his hands. Why don't you join many thousands upon thousands of people that even through COVID-19 have started that journey with God? You see, all God wants from you right now is what I call a big yes and a big yes is simply saying yes God I want to live my life for you please forgive me for doing things wrong for leaving you out of my life please give me new life and please help me to turn and follow you for those of you here today you know you need to say yes to God Why don't you just in your heart right now say, yes, God, that's all it takes. One heartfelt prayer to God that is simply, yes, God. And by saying yes to him, you're saying, yes, I want your forgiveness. Yes, I want to live life your way. Yes, I want to turn and follow you. That's what it means. Why don't you just right now in your heart and mind say, yes, God, go on, just do it now. Yes, God. Yes, God. My prayer for you is that as you've said yes to God, you'll know he's already said yes to you. It might be that you're listening here today and you're saying, Mark, I'm not really in that place. Could I invite you to say what I call a little yes? And a little yes is about making an intentional decision to find out more, to really investigate, to really look into Christianity, to the claims of Jesus to really find out what it's all about. And you can do that in several ways. You can do that by speaking to the people that are broadcasting this service. You can send a message if you are just watching it directly from the Elim YouTube channel and are not connected with the church. I'm just going to flash upon the screen now a link that you can follow to say, yeah, I want to find out more. Can you help me do that? Can you help me investigate this Christianity and if you said that big yes then let us know too and we can direct you to people that can help you to think through 
the decision that you've made or how you can find out more. Why don't you inside say, I'm a little yes, I'm a little yes. Might be that you're listening here today and saying, I'm not really ready to investigate that. But just before I stop, could I give you a very gentle challenge? You see, many people say they're open minded, but don't often apply that to Christianity. Can I encourage you to become open minded about Christianity? And if you are already open minded, may I encourage you to kind of make a commitment to remain open minded? It, it's what I call a healthy maybe that you're willing to say maybe there's something in this but you don't let it dissipate you keep it active just keep it on your agenda keep it in your mind and at some point when you feel ready begin to really look into that we'd love to help you with that if we can it's entirely up to you you can again contact us uh, following the link that's on the screen well if you're a big yes a little yes or a healthy maybe we'd love to help you
So hi everyone, my name's Duncan Clark. I'm the senior pastor at Coventry Elim Church and a member of Elim's national leadership team. And we've come to the point in our service where we're gonna take our tithes and offerings. Let me just say a couple of things about that. Firstly, if you're a guest, if you're just checking out church online for maybe the first time, we definitely don't want you to give. We're just delighted that you're watching today. But if you're part of a local church, a church that you call your spiritual home, this is a great moment for you to invest in the ministry and the mission of that church in the normal way that you would do that. You know, the scriptures encourage us when we come to this point of giving. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, that each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Don't you love the instruction of scripture? It's saying there that we shouldn't give with a forced like sense that somebody's twisting uh, our arm behind our back or we shouldn't feel any kind of pressure, but we give to God with a cheerful and a grateful heart. And I'd encourage you to do that as you give today. In fact, before we give, I'd love to take a moment to pray and express to God our gratitude to him as we give. And so Heavenly Father, uh, as we step into this moment of giving, uh, we come with grateful hearts because you have been incredibly good to us. Thank you, Father, that you could uh, reach out to us and place into our lives so many good gifts. You've blessed us financially. You've blessed us materially. You've blessed us relationally and you've blessed us spiritually. And in this moment then, as we give back to you, we're giving saying, God, we are so grateful that you have been so kind to us. And so Lord God, as we give, we pray that you would use what we have given to extend your kingdom, both in the local church that we love, but also different places around our world today. And so we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, God bless you as you give today. Well, thank you so much for joining us in today's Elim Summertime service. Wherever you're watching, whether it's in the UK or around the world, uh, whether you're somebody who's a committed and devoted Jesus follower or somebody who's just thinking about life and therefore faith, we trust that you've enjoyed being with us today. We are so grateful that you took your time to be with us. And don't forget, if you were a big yes, a little yes, or a healthy maybe, or maybe you might even be what I've called a yes again, that you have recommitted your life to Jesus. As a friend of mine says, updated your commitment. We would love to help you. So please get in contact with us again. Um, I'm just flashing the contact details up onto the screen and uh, get in contact with us and we would love to help you some more. But thank you for now. God bless and enjoy the rest of the summertime. <laughs>